Hi, this is the Buddy and X from The Candid Frame. Now, one of the things I always talk about uh, to my students is the whole issue of, of white balance. Uh, I'm not a real big fan of the auto white balance. I've never found that the auto white balance gives me the kind of color accuracy that, that I want. My biggest issue with it is, is consistency. The auto white balance in a, in a camera, camera typically looks at a scene and it looks at all the colors and tones and it tries to figure out exactly what the right color temperature should be for, for a particular scene and shot. And I found that the auto white balance, sometimes it nails it and other times it's off a bit. And it's that lack of consistency that's a real issue for me. One of the times when I find that auto balance, auto white balance is, is really falls short is in areas that are open shade or on a cloudy day. Um, under that kind of light, most cameras, regardless of brand, tend to provide a sort of cool or a bluish color tint to their overall scene, which I later need to correct for later in Photoshop or in Lightroom. And I really like trying to nail it at nail it as best I can in camera. And that's one of the reasons why I tend to use the white balance presets rather than the auto white balance. The, the presets are fixed for a particular color temperature, be it daylight, overcast, fluorescent, whatever. And I find that even if it isn't as spot on as I would like, it's usually a lot closer than the auto white balance is. And most importantly, if I'm shooting a series of images under that quality of light, then all my images are going to be consistent in terms of white balance. And that's really important to me, especially if I want to be able to batch process those images later. Here's an image that I, I shot in uh, Italy just a couple of months ago. And here with the auto white balance, it's giving me this sort of bluish color tint. I mean, if you take a look here at the, uh, the bottom of the wall and you look at the ground, you can see this sort of bluish color tint. And you can also see in this area here, which probably should be a little gray, that it's a tad, that it's a, a tad blue. And in the auto white balance, that's what you typically would get. When we go into Lightroom here and we actually use the presets that are available to us in the software, if you look at the daylight setting, you see that it warms up uh, a bit. It looks a lot better. Here in the cloudy preset, which is probably more in line with what the light was, it warms it up even, even more. So here's cloudy, and let's go to auto, and you can really see the difference in terms of the, the difference in the white balance. So let's say that I use the preset, and for, for argument's sake, let's say I had it on, on daylight. So having it on the daylight preset gets me in the ballpark, gets me much closer than having to make a bunch of adjustments later in order to sort of tweak the software. But actually, before I start playing even further with the white balance, I'm always going to adjust exposure first because I found that if my images is underexposed, then the colors, the way I perceive colors is going to be skewed a bit. And that if I don't adjust the exposure first, if I go first with white balance and then change the exposure, I find that more often than not, I have to revisit the white balance because now that the exposure has been corrected, I'm perceiving the colors slightly differently. So much like the last video, I'm going to establish my black points again by hitting the option key and moving the black slider over until I get those details there and then pull it uh, back about right there. Now I'm going to look at the whites and the image is underexposed probably by about a third of a stop, maybe a little more. And I'm going to go here and then pull back until I get all the detail. Probably can go a little further. And yeah, right there. So my overall exposure is already already going to be much better. And now if I want to tweak the, the white balance, this is where I'll use the eyedropper tool. Now with the eyedropper tool, what you need to do is you need to target an area that's fairly, fairly neutral. And from looking at this particular image, I think that the most neutral is somewhere around there. And you'll see these numbers that are on the bottom of the of this little call out window. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find an area where all those numbers are fairly close to each other. And that gives me a sense that, that they're, that's a fairly neutral area. So let's, let's try that. No, that doesn't, that doesn't do it. it still it makes it a little bit too yellow. So I'll just go about here. That's, that looks a lot better. Okay. Yeah, that looks that looks really good. So now by adjusting the exposure and then, well, f first beginning from a, a preset that's actually pretty accurate, 
adjusting my exposure and then using the eyedropper tool, I've gotten an exposure that's going to be pretty good. And if I show you the before and after, you can really see um, the difference that you get in terms of this. So this is the way it was shot in, in the camera. Um, so it's underexposed. Uh, the, the color isn't exactly accurate, but here is a more accurate representation of what I saw. So, so when I look at an image, what I'm, when I look at an image and I'm trying to assess color accuracy, I'm always looking for a neutral color. Uh, I could have used the white of her, of her top here uh, as a neutral color. It's not perfectly white, but that area right there. And, but I used this area here because it looked like it was more gray than, than the rest of the scene. And it seems to have gotten me right in the spot that I needed to be in terms of color accuracy. So my recommendation is get away from using the auto white balance. Try to use the preset as much as possible, which is going to call on you to be aware of the quality of light that you're shooting under. But you'll find that if you do that, your results will be a lot more consistent. And then if you have to do any minor tweaking later in Lightroom or in Photoshop, it's going to be a much easier proposition. All right, uh, that's it. And uh, you can find out more about all that we do here at The Candid Frame by visiting thecandidframe.com. And if you haven't already, please consider joining the Candid Frame Flickr group because I'll, in the very near future, I'll be pulling images uh, from there to share on this YouTube channel. All right, take care and I'll see you soon.